I'm going to tell a story about a, a political story. Uh, I'm going to try to tell this story in the context of, of, of uh, giving advice how you can move forward, but also, I think, as importantly, what to look for uh, if you are committed to this policy initiative of, of developing offshore wind for the East Coast, what you can look forward to as obstacles and objections that are being raised. And I just want to list a few of those. One of the chief obstacles, certainly, to offshore wind and any kind of alternative energy, clean energy or renewable energy development, are the climate change in ours. There's no, no way around that. That is not a, a legitimate objection to any of this, to these type of proposals, but it's a real objection that influences people. And one of the other major objections was the aesthetics. The studies that Blue Water Wind did and the, uh, and the, and the preemptive, again, uh, uh, reckoning of, of what would affect people Put that to best. Uh, one of the obstacles we're facing now is the cheaper natural gas. Uh, I call it the uh, fracking advantage. And no play on words intended there. But the fact is that ga natural gas is cheaper today, which was one of the selling points for the blue water wind pro proposal because it was going to become very quickly competitive price-wise with any other kind of generation capacity. So now the, uh, the, the uh, tables have turned in the public mind that, okay, natural gas is cheaper, it's gonna remain cheaper, that's not true. The more that we frack natural gas, the more that we come up with natural gas, the more China's gonna demand it, the more the prices are gonna go up. Eventually, it's gonna come back into the same pattern that was predicted when the Blue Water Wind Project was put in place. And the beauty of the Blue Water Wind Project was it was a 25-year guaranteed sustainable price, a 25-year guaranteed sustainable price for, for, the, for the users. Then there's the federal refusal, political, uh, politically motivated, I might add, to offer long-term long -term loan guarantees. And I, I go back and forth with the budget debate and all that. These long-term loan guarantees are necessary for any investor. But this brings us to the jobs, and Jim Lenard said this earlier, the jobs in this country that are, have been outsourced, that are disappearing, are manufacturing jobs. If we don't rebuild the industrial base in this country, now I'm a 37-year union man, I've, I, work, I worked as a machinist for a long time, I see a dying trade, a dying craft as uh, machinists, and I see an attempt here, or an ability here, to recover that kind of, of economic advantage. I talked to uh, Peter Madison from Blue Water, and we had uh, many discussions about can we bring not just a foundation manufacturer here, can we bring the actual turbine manufacturer here? And we can, if we have a market for it. I believe that economically, I believe that uh, historically and environmentally and for health, uh, health uh, concerns for the, for the public, for the planet, offshore wind is the way to go.